There's something bugging me from the last video, and that is we told the Entity Framework something it already knew. The Entity Framework can see from our playlist entity that we have a list of videos. So one playlist has many videos, yet down here we said the exact same thing. The playlist entity has many videos. And so why do we state all this? The only reason we state all that is so I can turn around and say, oh, by the way, videos has many playlists. This is the only new information that the Entity Framework cannot decipher simply by looking at the structure of our objects. And so I was kind of thinking, you know, that's, that's a waste. Why don't we just say, hey, Model Builder, Entity Video has many, V for video, uh, Video has many playlists. But as you can see, I'm not getting any, any IntelliSense port here because video does not have a playlist property down here. We eliminated it because we wanted to. That's the, the whole thing I'm trying to do here is use this model builder to describe my structure back to the Entity Framework without having to put that structure directly here in my entities. But it's almost like I'm being forced to do so down here. I can't say, hey, uh, video entity has many playlists if I could. If I could say that, I'd stop right there, and then this would all be new information to the Entity Framework, and I wouldn't have to restate what the Entity Framework already can see via my structure here. And so it kind of leaves you scratching your head a little bit, and thinking, well, why didn't they come up with a different syntax for us to... Uh, I, I can't say playlist here. I don't have a playlist property here. Well, let me, let me tell you, or show you, actually. Let me show you why we have to describe this relationship here. This lambda expression is critical. In fact, if I do control shift space here, you can see the lambda expression turns into a system.link.expression of func. Go look at my C sharp expression trees videos uh, to see how lambda expressions turn into data. All this turns into data so that the entity framework can look at that in memory object model and and work with our schema accordingly. And this lambda expression is actually pretty critical because it shows the navigation property. Right? A playlist has many videos, that's true, but the way it has many videos is via the videos property. Now we know by convention the Entity Framework will figure out that the videos property is the way back to the videos, is the way that we look at our many videos. But let me show you a different scenario. What if I had a uh, property called good videos. And I'll control L to cut that. Control VV, paste it twice. I have good videos, and now I have bad videos. So each playlist keeps track of a, a list of good videos and a list of bad videos. And so the Entity Framework can see, oh, well, a playlist has many vi good videos. A playlist also has many bad videos. And if I get rid of this down here, control KC, I'll build this and run this. I'll let it run to completion, except we get a build error because our Two string prints out all the videos. I think I'll get rid of the two string for now. I hope we're done with that. Control F5, build, build there. Oh, I call this good videos now, so I'll call this good videos because we have this good video inside of my good videos. Control F5, build that, run that, let it run to completion. How's the schema going to change inside of SQL Server? Pause the video, see if you can figure it out before I go over here to SQL Server and I do a refresh and show you what happened. F5. We don't have playlist videos anymore. In fact, I'll click over here on tables, refresh. You can see that we have playlists and videos, but we don't have that many-to-many -many mapping table anymore. I hope you figured that out before when we described nothing to the entity framework and we had a list of videos. We had a one-to-many -to relationship, but now we have a one-to-many relationship and another one-to-many -to relationship, many-to relationship. Let me get a drink of water. Hold on. Okay, that's better. So, one to many relationship. One to many relationship. Going back to SQL Server here. Uh, let me just uh, let me comment this part out. We don't have the mapping table anymore. F5. We have a one or a one to many relationship and another one to many relationship. This column, this playlist ID one column says that this video is in me awesome playlist inside of the good videos. This is the good video ID. So if this video is in the playlist, uh, it's, its ID is right here, just like we saw before. This ID is a subset of the ID. If I say I'm in a playlist, that playlist better exist. And this is the ID that maps me to the good video playlist, or the good video part of that playlist. And then 
this playlist ID. I'm not in the bad video playlist. I, I, I could make another playlist and put myself in the bad videos. In fact, I could actually go back to Visual Studio and say, hey, not only is this good video in the good videos playlist, control L, control V, V, it's also in the bad videos part of the playlist. Control F5, build that, run that, uh, let it run to completion. Let's make sure it ran to completion. And F5 over here, and now we can see, oh, this video is in the bad videos part of the playlist, and it's in the good videos part of the playlist. Well, that's nice and dandy, but that's not a many-to-many -many relationship. I still want that many-to-many -many relationship where videos can be in, in many playlists, and so we have to come back down here to the model builder and say, hey, the playlist entity has many good videos uh, with many uh, playlists. Videos with many playlists. Videos has many playlists. I've described that to you before. And then I'm not going to say anything else. I'll go back to SQL Server. I'll, I'm going to run this, let it run to completion, go back to SQL Server. How's the schema going to change? Pause it. Think about it before you see, see how I discover it. Go back over here. I'll hit a 5. You see that we lost our column indicating that we're in the good playlist. Go back to tables here. and Oh, here's the mapping table, playlist videos. So this is kind of interesting because a playlist can have many uh, good videos. And a video can also have many playlists in the good videos area. But a video can only be in one playlist as a bad video. It's kind of, this is getting kind of awkward, but... But that's what this represents. A video can only be in one playlist as a bad video, uh, but a video can be in many playlists as a good video. And so this is our many to many that we've seen before. Here's our one playlist to many videos uh, relationship. And so this Lambda expression is important because it allows us to take control and say, well, via this property, that's what we, uh, 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 the playlist ND has many good videos like so. And oh, by the way, it's with many videos back to playlists. Ugh, that's kind of a <laughs> that's kind of a headache. Now I'll leave it up to you. You could control L, control V, V this, and you could say bad videos here. We're gonna have many playlists. Uh, playlists will have many bad videos, and videos will also have many playlists in which they could be the bad video, and so on and so forth. You could play with this all day long. And uh, actually, one scenario that's kind of interesting. Maybe I won't let you play with this. Maybe I'll actually show you hopefully you're wise enough to realize oh okay well now we're gonna have two mapping tables I'll go over here and refresh this we have two mapping tables one for the good videos one for the bad videos now what happens if I go back to our program here and I say you know what let's do public list of playlists uh, playlists get set oh, get set what if I say this? <laughs> I have two ways in which we can get from a playlist to a video. And now I'm saying, hey, we can go from a video back to a playlist. Uh, but but does this mean it's the bad videos part of the playlist or the good videos part of the playlist? You know, what's going on here? Obviously, taking control down here is a good thing. Let me actually run this to completion. Let's look at what happens in SQL Server. Yeah, SQL Server. Uh, actually, can you think of what's going to happen before I re refresh all this? F5. Oh, look at this. Video ID null. And then over here, we still have our two mapping tables for the good videos and the bad videos. And now we have this video ID null, which is, is a third mapping. So <laughs> in prior videos, we had like this one way of getting back and forth. And now we have three. We have uh, one of these is the good videos. One of these is the bad videos. And then we also, hey, a, a playlist can be in many videos, which is kind of weird. But if I put a video ID here, that video better exist. So it's kind of going backwards from the way we saw in the first relationship. Doesn't quite make sense, but that's exactly what the entity framework did. It, it said, oh, well, if, if you're going to put list of playlists here, then the way I'll satisfy that is just saying, hey, it's a one video to many playlists situation. And, uh, and that's just kind of awkward. So maybe we want playlists here to map back to good videos. So what I'll say is uh, playlist has many good videos with many. And now I say V for video. Throw in a lambda expression here, V dot playlist. And now I've described back to the entity framework. Hey, this playlist property, don't, don't make this separate uh, video ID column. 
That's not what I'm trying to do. It's when I say playlist on video, that's mapping back to the playlist, and that's related to the good videos. So playlist has many good videos, and when I say playlists on a particular video, I'm talking about that relationship of good videos, which will take me back to the playlist. Let's go back to. I'll rerun this. Control of five. I'll run to completion. SQL Server, refresh all that. You see the video ID column is now null, and our tables over here, nothing changes. We we just know where the Entity Framework now knows that when I say video.playlist, that takes me back to a particular playlist, and that relationship is tied directly to good videos. So this Lambda expression, even though it looks redundant initially, and generally most of the time it may as well be, uh, that's the purpose it serves is so that when I follow it up with a with many which I think they should have called has many then I can describe which property goes back or ties directly to the first property